Hey, hey, guys, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Yash. Hi, good evening, and welcome, Yash, and welcome to everybody who is listening in to this episode of All About Markets, brought to you by Stockwell India and Business Insider India. And we have Yash, and we'll soon be joined by Sandeep Kumar Jain. Hey, Yash. Hey, Ashwin. What's up? How are you? All good, sir. I'm uh, eagerly wondering how do I stay awake till twelve thirty at night. But for the moment, I'm going to see how Sandeep is going to give us insights so that my Investing life can have more masala. So, hello, hi, hi, Sandeep. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, Bully boss. Hi, uh, Yash, and hi, Ashwin. Hi, Sandeep. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Good evening to you. Sorry, not able to hear you. I said good evening and thank you for joining us here today. Okay, Ashwin, there so is some evening, disturbance yeah. with your voice. I think. Can you rejoin again? I will do that. You guys carry on chatting. I will just reboot the app and I will start right back in. Okay. All right. And as uh, as Ashwin does that, let me quickly introduce you guys to uh, to Sandeep. So obviously he needs uh, no introduction. He's a very famous uh, personality on business media. We all love uh, and look forward to hearing him every day at nine thirty a.m. for Jain Sabke Gems. But uh, just to give you guys a quick uh, intro as to what Sandeep uh, sir does, he is the director and co-founder of Trades Fifth Broking. He is also uh the joint secretary of rajasthan exchange members association and the national executive Me- member of commodities participants association of india uh, he's done his graduation from mitty bai college and mba finance from uh, kj somaya both in bombay and he tracks both fundamentals as well as te- technicals across various asset classes be it equities commodities and currencies uh, sandeep sir thank you so much for taking the time out and agreeing to do this with us Thank you so much, Yash, for the lavish introduction, and I really enjoyed uh, listening to you. That you know, hearing to you that you enjoy listening to me on Jain Sab ke Gems, and I think that series is really working well <laughs> to the benefit of the retail investors. And lots of uh, unsung and unheard ideas are being discussed there, so people are like really enjoying that, and I think people are getting benefited also. And thank you so much Indeed. for inviting me. And just, start. just before we start, I'd like to ask uh, Sandeep sir. Um, you call yourself a financial freedom fighter. Help us understand a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question, and that's a great. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, you have noticed it. Great. So actually, uh, what we feel is, you know, people really want knowledge regarding finances, and we, whenever I meet someone or whenever. Uh, anyone from my company talks to anyone like lots of people come to us watching us on tv or generally our clients comes to us so we generally talk everything about their finances we try to do a risk profiling of those uh, leads or clients and then we try to suggest them you know first you should do your risk management of life like first you should buy your insurances after that buy sips and even after that you know if you have money spared with you then go for equity investments and equity investments we generally preach or uh, generally recommend that you know you should not get into equities if you don't have a minimum capital of spare capital of 10 lakhs or at least 10 to 20 lakhs you need to get into equity market and then what we do is if uh, everything is being met out and if the person has more money then he can go get into pmss or he can get into aifs if he wants to take more risk so we try to teach risk management then we try to inculcate uh, passive investing into the investor and then we uh, recommend him getting into equities and the other risky asset classes so this is how we try to make him uh, financially free lovely more strength and more power to you on your journey thank you thank you So let let let's stick Lovely. with the theme, and we'll talk about markets uh, slightly later on. Uh, uh, Sandeep Sorry, sir, yeah. the past couple of years they've been massive in terms of retail participation. How do you see this landscape evolve over the next five years? I think it will grow only, but not at the same pace because uh, somehow the speed was actually very fast, and we all from the ecosystem never expected this kind of you know participation. from the retail public and it was because of the corona and because people are sitting at home people uh, were free from their regular businesses Re- people had some spare capital from their businesses so they explored and now somehow the gen z also or the next generation the new uh, robin hood investors all of them who are coming to the markets have some kind of you know difference from what we have seen in the past i am there in the market since 
I was in class 11, and that is, I think, 1991. So it's already 25 to 27 years, and 23 years I've been actively involved in the markets. So I have seen that, you know, previously, historically, we have never seen such kind of education being spread. Like you are using a Twitter space today. We come on channels. Yep. There are so many YouTube channels. There are so many uh, groups on the WhatsApp. Everywhere education is there. So people are actually focusing on, you know, education now. People watch right videos. People get mentored by the right people. People follow the right Twitter handles. So, and I think these uh, newcomers, they are the Gen Z, what we uh, call them. They are excellent in terms of, you know, understanding in terms of their uh, uh, in terms of their comfort with the technology. They are using technology to the best and they're doing research accordingly. So I think, you know, things will be better. The speed may be slower in terms of participation, but whatever numbers we are seeing, they are phenomenal and things are going to be very different in the next five to 10 years. I think this is India's 10 years. India is in a very sweet spot and I feel India will do extremely well in terms of markets also, in terms of investors making money from the markets. That's more important. Yeah. Sandeep Ji, you spoke about millennials and young people. Um, yeah. You know, people in my father's generation used to be glued in front of the TV, looking at the tickers and looking at the newspapers in the morning. Are newspapers and uh, television dead for the younger generation? If everybody's on Instagram and Twitter and Spaces and taking their financial advice by talking to you directly? Oh, yes. In fact, uh, the millennials, the Gen Z, or even, you know, these days, Elderly people are also getting savvy with computers because they have some family member who are, uh, you know, making them computer savvy or IT savvy or they have got transformed digitally. So people reach to us. They reach to us through Twitter. They reach to us through Insta. Though I'm not very active on Insta. They reach to us through Facebook also. So And they follow us on YouTube also. Though I'm not very uh, popular or active on YouTube also. So I love Twitter and I'm there on Twitter. That's why I said yes to your Twitter space also. So somehow I feel that, you know, people have started realizing the importance of learning first and then jumping into the water of the ecosystem, stock market ecosystem. So people have started learning fundamental analysis. Those who are investors, those who are traders, they've learned that we have to learn technical analysis. So all these things are there now and people are focusing on them. And I think people have started reading books also. There are lots of audible books also. So I think all these things have added. And then there are so many content available on print media or TV or the electronic media or the social media everywhere. So people are using them and I think it will in fact add to their discipline. That's why we are not seeing that kind of volatility or that kind of you know, people running away from the markets. People have understood the risk management principles also. People have understood the uh, fundamentals of fund management. So we always teach, you know, it's not about research. Research plays 20% role in, you know, uh, making money. It's about risk management and fund management. So if you borrow money and invest in markets, you might not make money. It's very difficult if you borrow money or borrow knowledge and make money. So you have to have your own money, a little bit of own knowledge, then only you can make money in markets. So this is what people have understood and I have been doing this during the Corona only. I have done more than I think uh, 200 webinars during these two years and talking about fund management and risk management. It's 80-20, basically 20% is research, 80% is fund management and risk management. So it's the law of to apply here also. Lovely. So, Thank sir, you, you that mentioned lovely, about yes, how. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Ashim. Go ahead. No, no, I was just uh, over to you, Yash. Over to you. All right. Uh, so, Sandeep, sir, you were saying that how 80% uh, of investing is basically risk management and fund management. You discussed about all these resources available these days. Everything is basically at the click of a mouse uh, available. But oftentimes, uh, so much information becomes, you know, a problem and it can become overwhelming for people who don't come from a very finance ba background. So say for someone who's just starting off, what would be the right places to go to or what would be the right books uh, to read uh, or, or right resources to, 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 to seek out in order to understand risk management and fund management? How would you do it if 
Yeah, that's who are starting investing right fact, now. You know, I, have, I have done a couple of webinars and seminars on it. And I have actually uh, uh, uploaded those videos in my playlist also. So I would request people can go to my YouTube channel and watch those videos that can be of help. Then, as you said, you know, people can learn all these things. There are many, many mobile apps also these days. There are, I, I, uh, if you allow me to name them, I can name them also. There are lots of research apps also. There are fund managers. So I think if people use all the Gen Z or newcomers to the markets, if they use all these resources well, like there are portals. No, I, I, I totally get it. There are tons of resources. What, what I really wanted to know is what is the go-to uh, resource or tool that you use okay. or would you say if you were starting okay. up investing? See, like generally, uh, we have our own calculators and I have uploaded that in my company's website also. Like, you know, if someone is a trader and wants to enter into a trade, so we generally give an example, you know, 1% of the total capital cannot be lost in a particular trade. So if your capital is 10 lakhs, so if you want to enter into a trade, so you have to see the risk reward ratio as one is to three and you cannot lose more than 10,000 in that trade. So that is one example. So basically you have to learn technical analysis mm. along with fundamental analysis to do proper risk management and fund management. Because at times, you know, people uh, may get names, you know, uh, fundamentally uh, say DV's Lab is a very good stock, but DV's Lab is not very good on technicals as on date. So if you see the technicals of many of these pharma stocks, they are not ripe to be bought. Mm. So I feel that, you know, people should understand that, you know, fine, fundamentals of uh, DV's labs are going to improve only they have not deteriorated might be one or two quarter here and there they might have given uh, not up to the expected results but then one has to understand that you know technicals give you the timing to enter and exit technicals give you the risk also that okay this is the stop loss suppose the 200 dema is uh, 200 rupees as uh, 100 rupees and uh, the stock price is 108 rupees. So we know that, you know, the stock might take a supported 200 DEMA, which is a very important parameter for me, even when I look at, uh, you know, fundamental entry into a stock. So this is one thing, you know, so 8% is my stop loss. 8% is huge again, you know, but, but then if you are expecting a return of 30% or 24% beyond, you know, then you can think of, you know, okay, 8% or 24%, one is to three, because in, Cash market, if you enter into a uh, cash market, fundamentally strong stock or a small cap or a mid cap, 10 to 15% of stop loss is required. Otherwise, it might get triggered. So 10 to 15% of stop loss. And then, you know, you need to see the time frame also. You need to have that conviction also. Then you have to keep on tracking the results also. We have our trackers. Like we, we check corporate quarterly results. We have a corporate uh, quarterly result tracker with us. And there are many such mobile apps which are doing all these things. And I think uh, you have uh, those trackers, then you know you quarterly, uh, you track the quarterly results, then you track the annual results, then you track the uh, investors coming in and going out, DIIs and FIIs are whether they are interested in the stock or not, whether they are exiting the stock, how are the results. So overall, you know, if there is a management change, so there are lots mm -hmm. of things fundamentally and there are lots of things technically which one has to judiciously blend both of them to come up with a great solution of, you know, uh, risk management and fund management. Awesome. So that's a perfect segue for us to start talking about markets. And uh, obviously, uh, we've had a bit of good news. Uh, our inflation obviously wasn't that big of a problem. But yes, it was above RBI's a limit. That has come off. Uh, US inflation has cooled off also, came in at 7.1%. Uh, we're talking about uh, lower than expected interest rate hikes going forward. Uh, oil prices are obviously down close to around $80, $80 per barrel. FIIs are buying back again. Uh, in that case, uh, Sandeep sir, uh, how does the market outlook look like? Because we are at all-time highs. And while generally the, the news flow around everything is quite positive, there's still that sense of fear that, uh, that you know, could we see uh, a fall? from here how are you looking at the market and the setup see for me the markets are not yet at the lifetime highs very frankly for everyone people mm -hmm. see at the nifty levels and bank nifty levels but for me as i said you know i love mid caps and small caps and if you see the mid cap and small cap index particularly the small cap index it is a big underperformer yet it is yet to perform right, right? so but yes uh, somehow the broader markets are doing well 
and if we see even the broader markets also there are couple of uh, sectors which are not yet participating so there are tremendous opportunities and somehow india is in that you know sweet spot now again as i said in the beginning also that you know inflation is coming down we had a very favorable news day before yesterday when uh, we we saw that you know the inflation is coming below 6% which even the governor also was not expecting that but then that happened then we are seeing some yeah. uh, numbers on the crude oil front also like crude oil is coming below 80 dollars which is a very good sign for indian economy then uh, russia is giving at a cheaper rate so somehow you know the raw material costs are coming down the biggest elephant or the biggest uh, you know negative thing which can happen is the currency somehow the currency is going up uh, uh, dollar is going up rupee is getting devalued and dollar index is still you know managing to be above 105 so that one thing i'm noticing you know one has to be you know very vigilant and cautious about that particular thing but otherwise when we see the operating profit margins which were not doing well in last two quarters now i think in the coming quarters it will do well then we have seen rural demand again you know buzzing and india is not india it's actually bharat so if you see bharat and if bharat grows i think no one can stop indian economy and the government has very rightfully understood that you know india as an economy was an agrarian economy but now we have become a service hub for the world and we need to focus on manufacturing sectors and agri sectors so i think agri gdp they are working on it and it is also going up then we have to see manufacturing gdp it will also go up because with the kind of plis and with the kind of policies we are like working on so things are doing very well and i think you know india uh, and i have seen you know when a country is growing when an economy is growing between 2 trillion dollar to say 5 trillion dollar or 10 trillion dollar a uh, 5 trillion dollar we have seen in the past about us markets also we have seen japanese markets also we have seen chinese markets also so now it's a turn of indian markets so how we it can grow so i think uh, one should stay invested one should stay invested in mid caps and small caps my favorites large caps are already doing well out there also i feel that financials and bankings will again uh, rise from here yet you know if the economy is growing at such a fast pace i think uh, banks private sector banks and psu banks both will be the biggest beneficiaries and we have seen how psu banks are doing well in last say one or two months the biggest outperformers of the market right banks. and the reason was because the government took so much of initiatives without being you know sounding political i'm just trying to be an uh, wearing an economist hat so i have seen you know they have created a bad bank they have recapitalized them so lots of things happened and uh, then people have started scaring now you know in the past we have seen how promoters and these big guys will come to the banks and they will run away with the money so th- those things are not happening now and th- those things are not going to happen also so psu banks will do well lots of provisioning has been done and the asset quality has started going up the casas are going up now because they were under that preventive corrective action also that pca so now the casas are going up so things and there were so many mergers also many banks were merged so i think psus and private sector banks they will contribute a lot even it stocks which are not doing well they will, they are yet to participate pharmas they have not participated they will also participate auto sector is doing well we have seen what kind of waiting list we are seeing in terms of you know the cars even the luxury cars like mercedes they have come up with astonishing numbers even i was surprised to see the kind of you know aspirational buys in the country so then uh, i see agri inputs like uh, uh, the government is working on fertilizers and the agri inputs so things will get better mm. there also so lots of these sectors will do well and they are yet to perform and i think uh, uh, india's economy is going to grow and i think uh, the gdp's target will be i think much better in terms of you know uh, achieving in next 5 to 7 uh, years so sandeep sir in that case and i know like you also said this that you are you mostly love mid caps and small caps what would be your portfolio allocation uh, towards mid caps and small caps are you increasing it are you doubling it doubling down or would you stay put and wait for the breakout or the all time high to come and stay with the the large 
private banks and PSU banks and stick with a more large cap heavy portfolio. See, like. somehow when we uh, generally what I recommend is what I feel is you know it should be a flexi cap or a multi cap portfolio because at times you know uh, these large cap stocks give some resilience when the market might crash. You never know you know another war might be coming up. We have seen China issue coming up at Tawang. Tawang is in Arunachal Pradesh. So you never know, you know, geopolitical tensions or another kind of, say, a new corona coming up. So you never know. So you have to have a very judicious blend of lots of other asset classes also. At times, even gold has its importance in your, you know, portfolio. Even FD has an importance. Debt mutual funds has an importance. So generally, you know, that thumb rule, typical 100 minus your age is your equity exposure. But then in that also, we feel that, you know, uh, if you can do a passive participation, that can be great. But now, since your question is, you know, mid cap and small cap directly, we assume that everyone are into equities and what kind of uh, proportions we have. So generally, I feel that, you know, 30% uh, can go to large cap and 30% uh, to uh, mid cap because these days, you know, after the recategorization thing happened in last two years. So now, you know, those first 100 companies are the large caps. Then next 100 to 250th company is the mid cap. And beyond 250th mm -hmm. company are the small caps. So the small cap universe is huge. And I think, uh, I don't remember, last time I remember is like 11,000 crore company is also a small cap. So, so see the kind of growth in Indian uh, stock markets, what kind of market <laughs> caps we are seeing. So, you know, even a small cap universe, we have to now bifurcate into, you know, larger small caps or more liquid small caps. Then I also believe in nano caps also because we... Uh, buy at least 10% of nano caps also. We generally recommend that, you know, if we have a stock of, say, 500 crore, below five, 200 to 500 crore or below 1,000 crore stock, market cap stock, that can also do wonders. So there are tremendous number of companies. When I started Jensapya Jen, I was very surprised to know that, you know, an age-old industrial house in India, like the Oscar Group, all their companies were 1,000 crore companies only. So now they have gone four times from there. <laughs> so there are tremendous business houses, beautiful uh, managements which are available at, you know, two to 3,000 crore market cap. It's not about, you know, and they are market leaders. They are, their distribution network is across India. So just that, you know, uh, Indian markets somehow do not uh, pay importance or do not give importance to those mid caps and small caps in that big way. So these market caps and these stocks are actually languishing in terms of market caps. So I feel, you know, 10% uh, is nano cap, that below 1,000 market cap. And uh, 30, 30, 30, we can, you know, apportion to all these large cap, mid cap and small cap. And even in small cap and mid cap, I'll be very happy to buy, you know, uh, say 5,000 crore, 1,000 to 5,000 crore market cap companies, then 10 to 15,000 crore market cap companies. So for me, you know, everything... Uh, all the money can be, you know, utilized in small cap only because now we have seen what kind of uh, market caps in the small cap universe also. So again, we will have a new list uh, by December 30th. So every six months, uh, I think MP comes out with that list. Yeah. Right. Lovely comprehensive response there. Thank you so much for that. Um, you're talking about December 31st. I want to talk about February. Budget is around the corner. Um, what do you want to see in the budget? This okay, year? great. Okay. See, I would love to see, you know, uh, government working on uh, some taxation related to our markets. Somehow, uh, people are really scared that, you know, something negative can happen on, you know, long-term capital gains front or, uh, you know, uh, these short-term capital gains front. But somehow I feel that, you know, uh, the government and the finance minister won't spoil the party again. Because in the past also, we have seen what happened when, you know, uh, the long-term capital gains was introduced. And the whole February 1st, 2018, it was introduced. And till uh, September 2019, the markets were actually lackluster. People lost interest in the markets. And it was September 20th when, again, the corporate taxes were reduced. And when these 15% and that news came in, then we saw that uh, Nirmala candle or Nirmala Sitaraman candle on September 20, 2019. So from there onwards, market started bubbling again. You know, it started again uh, with full throttle and full energy. And 
again before the budget we saw that you know there were some correction and then corona started coming in because i remember when i was going for a budget show on z business on 31st of january i could see that fear in the bombay airport in the mumbai airport how the staff gmr staff were actually working with mask and all so that time i didn't realize but then february 6th onwards things started getting worse and then march 6th then march 15th somehow everything got clear so i feel that you know taxation front it will not happen just somehow i feel that government will really focus again on you know infra last time they announced 7 lakh crore uh, outlay on infra so again infra i really am very bullish on infra then banking again something needs to be done again on banking front then the green theme actually that's working everywhere so renewable energy wind energy hydrogen so government will work on that defense again defense will uh, in fact attract lots of budget then railways i think that will again uh, always there then fertilizers and uh, agri theme so that will government will try to work on that so i think you know these are the core sectors where you know budget allocations and implementation the best part about you know uh, last few years we have seen tremendous execution strength in the country and things are getting executed and we are seeing the result on the ground and now we are seeing what kind of compliance what kind of governance has been you know growing and people are actually talking about compliance the companies are actually talking about governance every individual is actually talking about compliance now and people are actually paying taxes we have seen indirect taxes clocking new highs every month or direct taxes touching new highs every year so i think these are some beautiful developments india has seen in last few years and i think it is going to make a very big change because there was a parallel economy in india which is now getting translated into the regular economy and we have seen how you know things are getting formalized and how uh, listed companies are getting benefit how uh, things are getting you know regulated also so all these things are really working and government will certainly work on more of these things and i think uh, direct taxation front i really expect uh, a good amount of you know measures in terms of you know tax free income or because see 5 lakhs is somehow i feel that it's too small for uh, these days because the inflation has gone up post corona things have been very different everything is expensive by say 25 30% the lifestyle index has gone up it's not about index of 6% i feel that you know whatever we go to buy in the markets they are going up so lifestyle index is i think more than 25 30% so let's see uh, but i i i expect a very market uh, friendly budget this time yeah well let's hope it is a market friendly budget sir and uh, we'll obviously come back to you during the budget season and ask you for your comments um, you spoke about uh, you spoke about currency and we wanted to talk to you about oil gold and currency but i'll stick to uh, where do you see you know with the russian oil and uh, lower prices of crude um uh, what kind of a near term uh, consumer impact are you anticipating you know, somehow uh, the russia news is really beneficial for the indian economy and i feel that you know 60 dollars they are giving and i think crude oil will also come down somehow uh, this is the range where you know uh, generally the crude oil will yeah. hover yeah you telling me something no not at all we are listening to you yeah. please go ahead sir so i think on crude front india is very comfortable now things are getting better now we were really scared when uh, and i think the pool now and uh, uh, the import prices i think they will come down again the pure impact we will see next 2 to 3 months because uh, in the last uh, monetary policy uh, in fact we could not see that uh, thing getting translated in the numbers but now in the coming policies and the coming quarters i think we'll see that impact yeah <laughs> Super. And a quick comment on uh, gold for the next one to four. See, quarter. gold and silver, they might perform now, you know, because the long-term yields are coming down. And uh, if uh, uh, the other asset classes now again, you know, uh, investors will get into the risky asset classes also. And uh, dollar now getting uh, cooling down because dollar index somehow is uh, the biggest threat to any investment asset class, you know. and i feel that dollar index have also made a high the recent highs and i now it's settling around say 100 to 105 it will settle down so that is a good news for you know gold and silver and silver 
and gold if you see the ratios silver and gold at one point of time uh, you know in 1915 i saw silver and gold at 100 times you know one gold is equal to 100 silver is equal to one gold it's like this uh, just to be you know saying it in a very layman language but now and during the times of diwali also almost gold and silver were at the same ratio but now the silver is actually outperform and gold is also catching up so i think you know gold and silver now are getting better technically also and fundamentally also i feel that you know gold as an investment class people have realized that you know gold uh, needs a space in every portfolio and as i told in the beginning also that you know it's very important to give that importance and now we have seen paper gold coming up uh, there are lots of financialization in terms of you know uh, gold investments also it's not pure physical gold now the mutual funds are coming up in uh, gold in india I'm particularly i'm talking about uh, the indian context only and silver also we have seen new industrial use there might be a scarcity in terms of you know silver getting used in lots of these green energy uh, materials so i think uh, the photovoltaic cells also or uh, new uses of silvers coming up so i think these two metals uh, will do well but again uh, somehow i am an equity person i always love stock markets and i feel that you know these two whatever they do 6 to 7% or 8% is the maximum but when you come to the nifty indi indices or uh, the indices i think uh, stock markets can easily beat these asset classes but yes that will come with uh, come with that pinch of risk and salt so i think uh, 15 to 13 to 15% is what we expect from the markets and markets will always outsmart and the best thing and the most passive investment and the most no brainer investment is investing in a nifty etf rather than investing here and there in a mutual fund so out there you don't have to you know depend on the performance of the fund manager or depend on your research so nifty etf is the best no brainer investment as of now what i have understood from my experience lovely thank you for that uh, yash over to you uh sandeep sir i was just uh, going through a little bit more uh, you know articles on on us inflation and interest rate and one thing that is very common all of the experts are saying is that interest rates will remain higher for longer and we've come through from a decade of very low to almost zero interest rate right so could we see based on this could we see a change in the investing strategy where growth and uh, growth stocks or growth investing or momentum investing would take a back seat and identifying value bets or value investing would be the theme for the next uh, say 2 to 3 years see somehow i feel that you know india as a market or as an asset class has become very attractive you know if uh, you have to beat say even the us fund managers have to beat 6% of inflation or 8% or 7% so they have to look for an economy or look for a asset class which can beat that so india will attract tons of money i feel in terms of you know uh, foreign investments and uh, as you said you know value investing yes that will always prevail but then uh, india has a beautiful growth story also and i think uh, growth investing or value investing will happen in india and there are uh, lots of psus which can give you good value you know investing opportunities and they are uh, actually zero debt companies trading at you know uh, 10 to 12 p multiples with good return on capital number uh, return on equity numbers so all those fundamentals are very good there just that the tag of psu has given that you know cheaper valuation so i feel things are changing in terms of government's mm. participation also government has realized that you know we need to you know uh change the perception of psus amongst the investors also i i have seen you know fis were never interested in buying psus but now they have started entering into psus so i think things are changing and these psus in indian markets are still uh, trading at cheaper valuations and there are tremendous opportunities in next 5 to 10 years in this psu because the assets they have and the kind of asset monetization the mm -hmm. government has planned 6 lakhs of like 6 lakh crores of asset monetization so i think that will really change lots of these psus uh, balance sheets and numbers and there is a disinvestment angle right. also then there is a strategic disinvestment then i think lots of things are happening on the psu front and the disinvestment fund also 
Um, just wanted to uh, draw your attention to tech manufacturing. And, uh, you know, if, for the last couple of weeks, all we are reading about is how phones will now be manufactured for the global market in India. And now India has this real chance of being seen as a hardware and tech manufacturing hub, right? Um, do you see any potential for retail investors to be able to cash in on this boom? Yeah, yeah. in fact, uh, it's a good question. And in fact, you know, that's a very big uh, plus for Indian manufacturing, you know, theme. In fact, you know, Indian manufacturing somehow was not recognized. And now because of China plus one, we are seeing what kind of interest India is generating now. And the PLI is all are working now, you know, towards the development of this theme now. So I think, you know, people will get benefited. We have seen, you know, I, I recommended once, you know, Reddington, I remember that, you know, again, with uh, all these names are coming up with, you know, disclaimers that, you know, uh, we might have recommended to our clients also, but in my personal account, I don't hold this stock, but our associates might hold this stock. So that disclaimer is there. So in all my stocks or what, whatever themes I'm talking about, because uh, somehow we have to respect the compliance. And uh, somehow uh, I remember, you know, recommending Re Reddington at a very uh, cheaper uh, levels, at a very lower level. So I think now, you know, once these things happen, and I think there are lots of other companies also who will be getting into this. And retail investors, uh, let's see, uh, people have got benefited from, I think, Dixon also, and uh, these themes are coming up. But then again, I'm always afraid, you know, whenever there is so much of euphoria and around any theme or around any idea, the valuations are not cheap. Everything comes at a very expensive price. So somehow I'm always a value investor. I always see valuations. I always see P multiples. I always try for those themes to cool down because there is so much of hype and hoopla around these stocks, you know, because you have seen what kind of valuations we have seen for all these stocks. So it's difficult also at times when the markets fall, I think, you know, these very expensive stocks tend to fall faster because they have, they have more room to fall. So I think one has to be cautious also. And let's see what kind of opportunities come up. We will always be there to share with the public in the public interest. Lovely. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah. Sandeep, sir, I have two questions rolled into one. So <laughs> the first one is, so you mentioned earlier in the conversation that how uh, at one point when you started Jain Pratke, Jain Skirloska group companies were uh, quoting at a valuation of less than 1000 crores. Obviously now, like you mentioned, valuations have run up a little bit. Broadly speaking, is valuation uh, a problem or do you still see comfort? And secondly, Within this huge PSU basket, you know, there are so many sectors, right? There's PSU banks, uh, there's defense, uh, there's manufacturing. Where is it that you still see uh, the maximum comfort? Because banks have, like you said, PSU banks in the last one month have run up so fast, even these defense companies. So is there still more room on the upside or would you rather wait for some correction or some other uh, sectors within the PSU basket where there is more, uh, you know, there's a better risk to reward ratio? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Again, you know, uh, see, even you're, I was talking about PSUs and you are catching my words, actually, you know, I talked about Kildoska. So there are many such groups also <laughs> and there are many such stocks. I really, I get surprised, you know, why these stocks are running at so... Uh, you know, cheaper valuations or the kind of distribution they have, the kind of infrastructure they have, the kind of business infrastructure they have. To create those infrastructures, you need more than thousands of crores. So they are running very cheap just because, you know, people are not interested. FIIs or the institutions do, may not get into those stocks because of their illiquidity. That's the biggest factor or the size of the company because five... Uh, Below 5,000 crores, even if they enter, I think that does not match their investment criteria. But yes, for us, and there are many celebrity investors, there are many renowned investors whose wisdom, I feel that, you know, uh, may be better than, you know, the wisdom of investors, both domestic and foreign. So institutions, basically. So th their wisdom of picking stocks, and somehow I really follow them. You know, there are many celebrity investors, and I also aspire to be one in the future. So I, we feel that, you know, uh, the companies are doing well, the management is good, just that, you know, the stock is illiquid and just that the stock is not renowned and people don't talk about the stock in the media also. So they are running cheap. There are stocks I have seen, like I talked about Kirloskar, all the Kirloskar stocks, one after the mm -hmm. other, I kept recommending because I, I feel that, you know, that corporate governance or that pedigree issues are not there. They are, in fact, to the advantages. 
So even in PSUs also, I remember recommending GRSE at one one third of uh, the today's uh, price. I remember recommending Cochin Shipyard. I remember recommending you know uh, HAL Hull. So all those stocks were recommended at much lower levels. So whenever there is a risk of say OFS, so these stocks generally has that talwar you know uh, uh, sword hanging for OFS. So that's why PSUs are not doing well. But then you talked about PSU banks. See, from the bottom, they have gone up by 60-70% or some of the stocks have doubled. But when you see it from the top, from 2017, because from 2017 onwards, these PSU banks have started deteriorating. They were not doing well. But then, you know, I remember Central Bank trading at 100 plus levels. And I remember some days back, you know, Central Bank trading at 22 rupees, 23 rupees. So from there, even if it has come to 40 rupees, from bottom, if you see, it's double. But from the top, if you see, it is yet at 30% of its value or 40%. So we have to manage our risk. We have to check our risk-reward ratios. And we have to do that fund management or the entry management wherein we can do some, you know, uh, staggered investing in these stocks because it's very difficult to predict the right entry or the right uh, exit. But then this is how you have to do in markets. You have to have those uh, clear stop losses also. Or uh, in terms of investing, you have to keep checking on their CASA ratios or keep checking on their you know, asset quality, keep checking on their growth numbers, keep checking on their quarterly numbers. So those things really work. So I think PSUs still have tremendous value. There are many defense PSUs. There are many uh, 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 these uh, other PSUs also. Railway PSUs, I just remember talking about railway PSUs, yeah. they did phenomenally well. Like IRFC or RBNL or IRCON, all these like shoot up like anything. So I think one after the another, all the PSUs will do well. Now we have seen fertilizer PSUs doing well, FAT or NFL or RCF. Now uh, maybe the turn of GSFC coming up, GNFC has done well. So one after the another, government has realized that we have tremendous value in PSUs, we have to monetize them or we have to devise policy which are favorable to these PSUs and we make them so beautiful that, you know, people come up with proposals to buy them strategically or the investment process becomes easier. So we have seen what IRCTC has done. IRCTC is running at a valuation of a startup or like 60, 70, 80 P multiple. Now it has come down because the stock prices have come down. But now, again, that I was always talking about, you know, IRCTC. I was not in favor of, you know, recommending IRCTC because I always had that, you know, sword hanging in my brain that, you know, uh, government might come up with an OFS in this because the valuations are mouth-watering. Why will not a promoter sell a stock which is at, you know, 60, 70 P multiple? And why will a government uh, or any promoter will sell a stock which is running at 6 to 7 P multiple? So that was the obvious choice and that happened. So I think uh, in next few days, I think that will happen also. So let's see. Uh, I have just come across a tweet only and still the news has to be verified. Yeah. So if I if I understand correctly, Sandeep sir is a foodie and he'll prefer a buffet of all PSU stocks instead of sticking with, say, one theme. Either it is PSU banks or agri or defense oh yes, oh yes. or even rail for that matter. <laughs> oh, yes. that's That's very important. You know, you have to... Have a decent portfolio. Otherwise, just PSUs. Yes, I I know one of my you know friends talking about you know getting into PSU banks. Well, I want to be all in in PSUs. Yes, he is a great trader. He understands the markets well, and he told this is one of our clients only. Plus, sir, मुझे तो पूरा PSU में सारा पैसा लगाना है. मुल्ला लगा सकते हो कोई दिक्कत नहीं. दिखने में तो बहुत cheap लग रहा है. Things will work because uh, everything we're actually mm -hmm. in favor of you know PSU banks doing well. Like four to five years, they have underperformed. They have not participated in the whole rally. Then the valuation is very cheap. Downside risk was very low. So everything was right and ripe for, you know, PSU banks. But still, as a matter of, you know, diversification principle, we cannot do that. But fine, you can have an extra weightage on that. So that's what we have recommended to our clients also to have extra weightage on, you know, PSU banks and PSU stocks in last two to three months. Yeah.
All right. Moving on to a sector which is not so sexy right now, uh, real estate. You know, despite uh, you know rising interest rates, there has been no slowdown in new home registration yet. Most of these names haven't had a great 2022. What is it that you think is uh, weighing on the sector? Or could we see a reversal in 2023 for real, real estate, estate companies and real estate as an asset class are two different things. People feel that you know real okay. estate is doing well. That does not mean that the real estate companies will do well. But for sure, the HFCs and real estate building materials companies will do well with the boom in real estate industry. So I, I always try to play in a surrogate manner. Whenever I have to do an analysis, I try to go with ancillaries. So like if people talk about auto stocks, I will talk about auto ancillary stocks. If people are talking about defense, I will go to defense ancillary stocks. If people are talking about power sector, I will not go to the direct company. I will look for power ancillary stocks. So it is very important to you know look for those opportunities where you can you know get into these ancillary stocks. So now. Cement is an ancillary to real estate. HFC is an ancillary to real estate. A uh, sanitary ware company is an ancillary to real estate. A plywood industry is an ancillary to real estate. So I will buy these stocks rather than buying a bad balance sheet in a real estate company. I think I will buy a clean and a very good balance sheet. We have seen companies who have got nationwide presence or even international presence, like Century Ply or Green Group and all these. So they have tremendous distribution network, tremendous pedigree, tremendous experience, and tremendous leadership strengths also, and they are market leaders. And yet they are very small companies. Had it been some other countries, they are much bigger companies. I think in US and then if you compare it to their companies, uh, companies in that those countries, they are very big. So I feel that you know, uh, one should look at these uh, sectors when there is a boom in real estate. I was listening to a management today on Z Business also. You know. Things are getting very good, at least in Bombay, Bangalore, or the metros. But they may not be as rosy in you know the other cities. But yes, because you know so much of uh, fresh money was being printed across the globe, so there was a repricing of all the asset classes under the sun. And the same thing happened in real estate also. So if you know everything has to go up by say twenty, twenty-five percent or thirty percent, so real estate also did the same thing. But that does not mean that there is a very big boom in real estate. But yes, for next five to ten years, yes, things may go up. But in India, we have to see that you know if the economy will do well, if there is a fresh demand for industrialization, then only I'll be bullish on that, because industrialization brings you know uh, the employees to the, uh, to that industrial area land closer to that industrial area. Then we have housing demand there. I. I I am from Jaipur and I can see S E Z here. So still, you know, there is so much of land vacant in S E Z here, and there are so many plots vacant around those S E Zs. So things, uh, maybe you know, we say that you know, real estate, the stamp duty collection and all those things are doing well. But still, I will I am not very bullish directly on uh, real estate companies. I might you know resort to R E I T, real estate investment trust. We have got two three real estate okay. investment trust. So that's a new asset class which we generally talk to uh, the clients who are a little bit aged also, and where the uh, risk profiling uh, we see the risk profiling with uh, they are risk averse, a bit risk averse, then they can buy say MBC REIT or Mindspace REIT where you know you have a appreciation tag to it and plus the rental income also. So 10 to 11 percent in the longer run cannot be you know ruled out. We have recommended IRB invits also. So these things are uh, different. Uh, Capital market instruments these days in the markets, so one can explore that. So still, there are some good quality real estate companies. Not that there are, because I have recommended, say again, a PSP project. I have recommended some smaller uh, real estate companies also. Even the Bombay and Bangalore-based real estate companies are doing well. The corporate governance standards mm. and the balance sheet quality is getting better. So even Godrej is a good group. Mahindra Life Space is a good group. So those uh, balance sheets are there. Those names are there. But still, you know, uh, I feel uh, ancillary can be a better play, and HFCs will really do well. Got it. Uh, so, Sandeep sir, using your uh, your strategy where you know you look for ancillaries or you look for adjacent, if you're bullish on consumption, if you're bullish on the India growth story, then do any of these new age tech companies, uh, consumer tech companies, a feature in your list, considering that they've fallen so much 
uh, recently no no see 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 somehow i was coming up to that you know <laughs> and i was really expecting a question <laughs> because i was expecting a question you know which sectors you are bullish at so i would have answered it you know i am very bearish i am bullish on the whole indian economy minus these new age companies come what maybe <laughs> a big no to these new age companies because of their valuations they are running at uh, we have to see them see they are startups and they are getting listed to give an exit to their pe investors or their you know initial mm. investors so that does not mean that they are investable companies fine we use them every day we see them and it's not that uh, all of them will fail in the long run but i feel that you know in a portfolio you can have a 5% or a 10% allocation to the whole set of universe of these startups so if we have a portfolio of 100 rupees fine you can invest 5 to 10 rupees in this startups but that too also divided into further 10 startups so they are good for you know uh, startup investors they are not good for equity investors out here in equity markets we see cash flows we don't see price to sales price to sales is such a different parameter see when i start investing i i see price to book value i'm such a conservative person i see what is the book value and what i'm giving it to the company like banks are yet uh, mm. trading below price to book value multiples like below one if you see punjab national bank or bank of baroda and sbi still are trading above book values fine there are reasons you know uh, because there are bad assets also that's why they are trading below but there was a time when you know they were running at 20 paise of their book so as bad as 20 paise so why will not i not buy these mm. stocks and buy a stock which is burning 300 crores a quarter i was being asked about you know uh, say policy right. bazaar or zomato fine uh, uh, nika came into a little bit of profits but what kind of crazy valuations they are so i i i was not willing to take the names but somehow when you talk about these uh, new age companies you need a great understanding of the businesses and i don't have that kind of understanding believe me if i have to invest in a startup it's not that i don't like startups or i am not an investor in startup i have started exploring investing in startups and i i love exploring businesses i love taking risk but i will not take that kind of risk in stock markets out here i am a different person when i am going to a startup space i'll be a different person so here we have to see the cash flows we have to see the earnings we have to see uh, the growth numbers roki numbers return on capital employed return on equity and all these things are negative here so i feel you know uh, i've talked a lot about these things i've taken more than 3 minutes to <laughs> criticize the uh, new age company but then that's how you know i get really uh, excited or get uh, you know instigated when i have to talk about this new age company <laughs> no we totally love your passion and you know thank you for helping us candidly understand how we are looking at this space mm-hmm. so thank you once again uh just a quick i know we've got a couple of more minutes um and and we've got a lot of you listening in if there is something specific that you want you show me to bubble up into this conversation uh please reply to this tweet and um, we'll quickly loop that in um before we close um this evening's uh, very wonderful discussion uh for the moment yash back to you uh one last question from my side uh, sandeep sir before we have any of the audience questions in the comment section um you know 2022 is almost uh, coming to an end we are just a couple of weeks away from it uh, it's going to be a new year what have been your learnings and what would be your uh, advice to young investors or you know even even someone who has been who has been investing for the past few years what should they keep in mind uh, what mistakes perhaps that they should avoid uh, going forward see somehow i feel that you know uh... those who are coming to markets uh, though i have seen a good trend of you know people coming to markets after learning now they have started giving importance to the learning theory that fine if you have to come to the markets you really need to uh, get yourself trained so i feel that you know uh, when you uh, my advice to all the newcomers is that you know whenever you come to markets you first have to analyze yourself what kind of personality you are and try to have a 360 degree opinion about yourself and try to adopt a 360 degree approach to the markets lots of times you know i i heard people you know saying that i only love fundamentals i i only invest in terms of fundamentals on looking at fundamentals 
देर आर टेक्निकल्स गाइज आई ओनली लुक टेक्निकल्स मैं तो टीवी वी कुछ नहीं सुनता आई लव टेक्निकल्स I don't find anything in fundamentals. It's not like that. And there are people who only love buying options. So I feel that you know, if someone can really work on you know having a 360 degree approach, and we were talking about financial management, risk management, we talk about tax management also. There are lots of good. There are tools you know where you can manage your taxes also. Like uh, if uh, the stock has gone up by say forty uh, percent in a year, but if uh, In say eleven mm-hmm. months, and if you hold it for say another one month, and even if the stock comes down by five percent or seven percent, but then the tax efficiency will enhance your returns. So you don't need to sell that because out here you will pay fifteen percent, and if you hold it more than a year, you will pay ten percent. So you need to have those Excel calculations also, accounting calculations also. So if you really need to make money in stock markets, you need to have all these things in place. if you cannot do that then just stay as a passive investor stay invested in nifty etfs as i told you in the beginning only or you invest in mutual funds but if yeah. you come to the markets fine if you are a pure fundamental investor then do your research and get into it but please don't invest on borrowed knowledge you can borrow something but try to do your own study and then get into markets so what i have learned in the last one year is Uh, even you know at my end also that you know too much of focus on mid caps and small caps at times because in last one year too much of focus on mid caps and small cap didn't give any return but those who were writing options they made tremendous money those who were exploring ideas like psu banks and all they made very good money so somehow i feel that you know uh, you need to go with the theme also you need to try to understand or try to predict also at times i don't predict markets but at times you know looking at the indices of that particular sector we should try to predict the move in that particular sector like you know if you see uh, say auto sector uh, if uh, auto sector is coming up above 200 dema or above all the averages so finally the auto stocks will do well we have seen bank nifty doing well so you can see the components of those bank nifty which are not yet participating so like au finance bank i remember uh, that was still languishing and all the other like uh, icic bank or excess bank or kotak bank were doing well so we got on to excess ba- uh, au finance bank so we tried to uh, buy that say 585 90 and now it is 675 in say just 10 to 15 trading sessions so we have to have this open mind we we should try to predict something at least because if your prediction is right you will make tremendous money and even if your prediction is wrong you should do such risk management that okay fine i am wrong but yet i am not losing money but if i am right i will make huge money so that is that balance we have to try to you know acquire and as i said you know 360 degree approach one should try focusing on learning things you know every day there is so much of learning in the markets so fundamentals technicals options at least you do all the classes so you will at least understand what you understand and what you don't understand so what you don't understand don't try to understand or try to understand in a different manner or you understand that you know you can have a person who has a better understanding than you in your team so this is how you know i think that's typical uh, you know tongue twister understand on understanding but then i think those who are <laughs> listening to me they might have understood what i was trying to make them understand <laughs> this is fully received sir <laughs> <laughs> awesome sandeep sir thank you so much very very valuable uh, insights there identify know what kind of an investor or a trader you are do your own research you can borrow information there are tons and tons of resources don't be over concentrated in a certain sector or in a certain market cap beat mid caps or small caps and obviously uh, do learn technicals there's nothing there's no harm in looking at charts <laughs> they're not your enemy great uh, great piece of advice and we're completely out of time on this conversation sandeep sir thank you so much for this really candid and transparent conversation uh, and to all our listeners who joined in perhaps late uh, this Uh, this Twitter Spaces session is being recorded, so you can go back and listen to the full conversation. It will be the first pinned post on our handle. From that's all from me, Yash and Ashwin. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you very much once again, and um, lovely. We'll catch you all next uh, Wednesday, and we're back at uh, the same time and at the same handles. 
to continue our conversation on all about stocks. So till then, you guys have a great time and um, catch the football match. Today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lovely talking to you all. Thank you so much. I hope I added some value.